Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namaste So here we come to chapter 13 of the Vidyeshwar Sanghita of Shiva Purana. And, and this is a monster. <laughs> I had to break it up into two because it's so long. But as many of the best sections of Shiva Purana, it's based on a wonderful question. And the question by the sages is, what is that good conduct that quickly brings one to the higher worlds? Now, this is the crux of spiritual life. Not, how do I feel today? Or how can I gain something tomorrow or in the near future? But how can I set myself up so in the next lifetime, I go to a desirable place, a deva loka, a godly planet or world or realm, whatever you want to call it. So, of course, the ultimate is to attain Shiva's realm. And that is given in this chapter. <laughs> you know, my approach is not detail-oriented. My approach is abstraction. How can I find the principle or principles that underlie all the details? Because if you know the principles, you can derive the details easily. It's like physics. There are uh, like a handful of basic equations in physics, knowing which, uh, if you're good in math, you can derive all the rest of physics. So it's the same way in spiritual life. There are a few principles that are so basic and powerful that they drive everything else. And the principle that we're talking about here is basically relationship, rasa. Rasa means an emotional taste in a relationship. So the relationship between the individual and God is basically one of servants, servitorship, dasya rasa, this is called. And the essence of this dasya rasa is calling the name of the Supreme. Just like if I want to get your attention, instead of just going, hey, you, I'll call your name. And that brings you immediately around, hey, well, what do you want, right? So in the same way, it's given here, if one chants the five-syllable mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, a thousand times in the morning and a thousand times in the evening, one attains Shiva's realm. This is huge. This is what it's all about. This is the ultimate goal. Not to go to heaven or not to go to any of the higher worlds like Tapalok, Janalok, Vidyalok, you know, all these different places where sages go. But to go directly to the top, to the ultimate goal, to be associated with Shiva. I mean, that's as good as it gets. That's the ultimate. Because then you become like Shiva. And eventually you join, you merge with Shiva. And this is really the ultimate thing. But it's only available in that realm. It's not available here. So you have to go there in the next life. We are all eternal. We're going to be around forever. <laughs> So, what are you going to do with your eternity? Where are you going to go? Who are you going to be? What are you going to do for all eternity? It should be something very nice that you'll enjoy. And, of course, it's the best if it's wonderful. <laughs> what could be more wonderful than being associated with Shiva and Shakti directly, personally? have a personal relationship with them. 
And of course, the best way to do that is to be their servant. Huh? The One of the ganas, Shiva Gana. Gana means like a group or a gang or uh, associates. So by becoming his associate, by rendering a service unto him that he finds pleasurable, that delights him. Huh? And that means continuous improvement. You know, it's a, a truism in business that to delight the customer requires continuous improvement of the product experience, right? <laughs> so I used to teach project management. But anyway, the same principle applies in spiritual life, that you should not only delight God with your service, but you should continuously improve the delight of God with your service. And this is the key to everything. Huh? You notice I'm getting all blissed out. <laughs> because it's wonderful to share these things that have made my life extremely wonderful and delightful. And why? Because what we do to Shiva is what happens to us. Ultimately, we are Shiva. Shivo hum. Aham brahmasmi. So how we act towards Shiva, who is the Supreme Brahman, if we act towards him in a loving way, in a beautiful way, in a helpful way, in a sympathetic way, huh? to understand his point of view on things and what makes him happy. I mean, it's like any close relationship. You want to understand what makes your partner happy. That's the key to a successful relationship, because if they're unhappy, they'll go away. So, in the same way, when we approach God, we do the things that make him happy. And he says pretty much clearly here in Shiva Purana, I love it when you call my name and when you do it with devotion, not just mechanically. Uh, not just uh, as a rote religious exercise or something like that, but as a real relationship. Aum Namah Shivaya. Aum Namah Shivaya. Conversationally. This is part of a conversation, your side of the dialogue between you and God. So in that way, it should be pleasant. It should be uh, beautiful to hear. And that's why we try to make beautiful musical arrangements of the mantra. And <laughs> we don't always succeed, but we try. <laughs> and we uh, also, when you'll see when we get to the part on uh, deity worship, worship of the Shiva Lingam, uh, when we demonstrate all the principles that we went over in, I think it was uh, chapter 10, how to worship the Shiva Linga with 16 kinds of ingredients, you will see that these things are, uh, I mean, they would make anybody happy huh? to be offered nice scents and a f fan in the hot weather or to keep the flies off. You know, here we have cows, so we have flies. <laughs> and to offer nice food and uh, drinks. And uh, when he comes in, when, when his presence manifests in the deity to offer a, a welcome ceremony, which is what arti is. You see people, you know, waving these plates with lights and stuff like that, incense and all. This is a welcome ceremony. This is a hello Shiva, you know. So when uh, we offer these things to him, we get the result. I mean, it's so simple because he is us. I should say they are us, Shiva Shakti. He is the indwelling consciousness, Brahman. And she is the manifestation, the form, the name and form of the world, of ourself, our body, our mind, our senses, the world. Everything that exists is her. So when we offer her manifestations, her beautiful Maya <laughs> to Shiva, 
He's pleased. They're both pleased. And when they're pleased, we're pleased. You know, it's so simple. This is the principle. This is the active element of bhakti. Now, a lot of the things in this chapter, which, by the way, you should watch both uh, episodes of this chapter because there's a lot of details. And by hearing those details, you will get an idea of what a principle, another principle, which is ritual purity. And this is an essential element of karma yoga. Karma yoga is ultimately based uh, not only on the principle of service, but on the principle of purity. That there are different levels of purity and cleanliness. And in Sanskrit, this is called suchi. Suchi means that not only it's pure, but by coming in contact with it, you become purified. So this is a very important principle, these different levels of purity. And that accounts for so many of the rules that are given in the section on, you know, how to get up in the morning and take bath, uh, how to cook in the kitchen, how to clean the temple, how to offer the different paraphernalia uh, in the puja, and so many things. Um, for example, uh, we use scents. We use different scented oils, for example, in the worship of Shiva. And these are all to create an atmosphere of purity, that uh, this isn't just an ordinary place. Huh? This is a, a beautiful scented chamber where Shiva and Shakti enjoy with each other. So just like if we want to create a nice mood in a room, we'll light incense or we'll have some scented oils in a vaporizer or something like that to create a nice atmosphere. In the same way, offering these things to Shiva that are pure and purifying also purifies us. He's already the supreme pure, huh? the supreme purifier. Simply by coming in contact with him, one becomes purified. So the point of all this worship, these different rituals, mantras, and so on, pujas, everything, is to come in contact with Shiva in a favorable way. Uh, to come in contact with him in an unfavorable way is a good way to lose your head <laughs> or just get vaporized like Cupid. Poof! <laughs> but to come in contact with him favorably, this is bhakti. This is devotional service. And to do it regularly, uh, every day, to have a routine, and establish that routine as the foundation your, the, of the, the bedrock of your life. Huh? Just like now we're building a temple, so we're excavating the soil down to the bedrock. Because we live in a mountainous place, underneath the soil there's rock. So we took away all the soil and loose rubble, but right down to the bedrock, and we're building the temple on that. And that is the foundation. That way we don't need a footer, uh, if you know anything about construction. If you're in an unstable soil, you have to make a concrete footer to put the walls on. Otherwise, the whole thing will sink into the ground. And then sometimes it does anyway. But uh, on the, when you're building on rock, there's no need for that. You can build directly on the foundation uh, without a footer. So that's what we're doing here by establishing a daily routine. And the, the most important part of that routine is japa, chanting the mantra. And of course, as I've mentioned, this five syllable mantra, Panchakra mantra, Nama Shivaya, prefaced by the pranava, Aum, is self-initiating. So you don't need anybody's permission. You don't need anyone's uh, any kind of a initiation ceremony or anything like that. Although that's nice. If it's available, you know, do it. But really the essence of it is that you come in contact with Shiva in a favorable way, in a worshipful way, 
as a sevaika, as someone who is offering service, praise, adulation. And you'll be surprised. When you chant, if you chant like he, you know, a thousand repetitions of this mantra only takes about 40 minutes. You know, it's not a whole a lot of time involved. If you do nothing else in your spiritual life, sit in front of a nice picture of Shiva and chant this mantra. And I guarantee you, once you get to a thousand, if you keep going, some really nice things will happen <laughs> inside. So uh, <laughs> do this one thing. If you don't do anything else that's mentioned in chapter 13, do this one thing. Chat Aung Namah Shivaya a thousand times in the morning, a thousand times in the evening. That's 10 rounds on the beads, 10 times around the beads. And you'll be surprised how quickly it goes and how pleasant is the result. Because when Shiva is pleased, we are pleased. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>